welcome to the main section of the Shipwreck Centre here. As you can see, we're in a really atmospheric setting of a 16th century stone barn, which was the next farm building before it was converted to take this exhibition. You can see behind me, we've got a, a big signboard there uh, saying the Sirenia. Now, the reason we put that up there, it's a very, very sad and tragic story in, in Isle of Wight lifeboat history. The Sirenia was a fully rigged steel sailing ship uh, that got wrecked on Atherfield ledges back in the 1880s. It was a tragic day for the lifeboat community of the Isle of Wight because not only was the coxswain of the Bryston lifeboat lost, Moses Munt, he was lost overboard and couldn't be found in, in, the, in the worsening weather conditions, and he drowned. Uh, but also the Brook lifeboat launched shortly afterwards to assist the Bryston lifeboat, and they actually lost their second coxswain overboard as well, as well as one of the crew that had been rescued from the Sirenia. A really bad day for the Isle of Wight service on the back of the island. It's a reminder of just how much those people sacrificed in those days. They gave their, their own lives to go and help others at sea. Right, we're now in one of my favorite sections of the shipwreck center here. It's obviously favorite for me because being a diver by trade, it, uh, it's great for me to be able to have all this old diving equipment. This diving equipment has been around since the early 1800s. It was originally invented by the Dean brothers, who are a, a quite inventive pair of brothers that were around at that time. They originally came into uh, this idea by seeing a burning barn in a farm, and they wanted to find a way of saving the horses. So they, they invented this gear that uh, they could actually move into the barn when the place was on fire, pump air into the helmet and actually go in there and retrieve people or horses or whatever. Now when we talk about early diving, look at this. This is just classic. Now can you imagine, picture the scene, you climbing into that barrel and someone screwing up the, the screws on the outside and you're inside there looking through a little glass port in the bottom. Here's the glass port. Here's the diver's arms. Now imagine the pressure on that when you're at atmospheric pressure inside, just like we are now, but your arms are subjected to whatever pressure it is outside, whether it be 30 feet deep or 60 feet deep. The deeper you go, the more pressure will be on these arms. Now this display is all about the HMS A1. The HMS A1 was the first all British designed and built submarine. When she was tragically run down by a liner that was coming into the Solent uh, called the Berwick Castle. Now as we move on to the next section there, you'll see all the, the stuff that people dream about, the treasures from the deep, gold coins from different wrecks, um, pocket watches from wrecks on the Cape Verde Islands. There's just concreted coins where they're all concreted together as they're found on the seabed, where they all layer and it's just almost cemented together by interaction with dissimilar metals. This is part of the, the Pluto line. Now the Pluto line was a line that was laid across the channel in the Second World War to actually pump fuel over for after the invasion so that the Allied troops would have uh, sufficient fuel to be able to progress through Europe to uh, beat back the Germans. They managed to lay several of these lines across the channel without the Germans actually realizing what was going on. They had these huge drums that they towed behind tugs like a cotton reel and they actually called them conundrums. So uh, that was the nickname because it was a chap called Conan that actually thought up the idea. Now one of the saddest stories we have in the museum here is about a ship called the SS Mendy. Now the SS Mendy was a, a, a big 5,000 ton ship that was uh, coming from the south coast of Africa, bringing battalion troops from the townships of Soweto and places like that um, to actually come up to Le Havre and be unloaded to dig trenches for the Allies. They got hit by another ship called the Darrow and it sliced straight into them in the fog. It was proceeding at high speed and hadn't um, slowed down because of the fog. And the ship actually carved straight into the side of the SS Mendy. Well, you can picture that scene. You know, all those people uh, that had never even seen the sea before they'd set off on their ship from South Africa from their home, 
and now they were being um, thrown in the water by the ship sinking in some 20 minutes only and they couldn't swim, they didn't know what to do and 656 people lost their lives. Now you can see some of the items here, uh, some of them actually still work in particular the engine room telegraph, if you turn it you still get the ding ding which will do that in a minute. Someone was actually operating that as the thing sliced into the ship. They would have called for a, um, a stop to the engines and, and the last person that operated that probably died in the wreck because they were down below. But this steering stand here, uh, you know, someone was actually steering that at the time of the collision and it almost brings it alive, you know, to try and imagine what was going on and the panic that must have ensued on that particular night. Now in these display cabinets we're concentrating on the navigational instruments. Now a lot of you will have seen the old uh, pictures and films of the old days when these people are on heaving decks, you know, with these sextants and octants and these wonderful old uh, navigational instruments of those days. We've got a pretty good cross-section of uh, the different instruments here. We've got the octants, which uh, was really the forerunner of the sextant, the modern day sextant. We've got the oldest surviving RNLI lifeboat, uh, the Queen Victoria, 1887. Now there are other uh, lifeboats around the country that predate this lifeboat, but this is the earliest one of the RNLI. So at 1887 it's quite an early boat. Now this section is great for uh, educational value for school children or anybody that doesn't really realise what items are like actually in their raw state on the seabed. If you look here, when you look at all the polished items, you know, it, you imagine that these things are down there on the seabed, but, uh, they're polished, but they're not. This is the raw state here, and this is what, this demonstrates what, how much work is involved in cleaning this stuff up to get to the state of what you've seen in the cabinets there. Our captain he spied a mermaid so fair with a comb and a glass in her hand. Oh, the ocean waves do roll. And the stormy winds do blow We old sailors are skipping at the top While the landlubbers lie down below, below, below The landlubbers lie down below And up spoke the captain of our gallant